It's time for This Week in WordPress, episode number 274, entitled Smooth Buttery Feel. It was recorded on Monday the 6th of November 2023. My name's Nathan Wrigley and I'm joined by three guests this week. I'm joined by Taco Verdenshot, by Andrew Palmer and Zubair Sadiq. It's a WordPress podcast, so guess what? We talk a lot about WordPress. We talk about the coming updates to WordPress 6.4, and there's a lot of nice stuff to be considered there. Gutenberg 16.9 also has some nice updates as well, particularly around the ability to change the name of blocks in the inserter. WooCommerce, no more. Woo is the new name. You can find it at woo.com. Why has this been done? What do we make of that decision? We spend absolutely ages talking about translating the WordPress project. So not your website per se, but all of the documentation and materials which enable you to learn WordPress. And we spend so much time on that that we kind of run out of time. But in the show notes, there will be lots and lots of other things to talk about. It's all coming up next on This Week in WordPress. This episode of the WP Builds podcast is brought to you by GoDaddy Pro, the home of managed WordPress hosting that includes free domain, SSL, and 24 7 support. Bundle that with the hub by GoDaddy Pro to unlock more free benefits to manage multiple sites in one place, invoice clients, and get 30% off new purchases. Find out more at go.me forward slash WP Builds. Hello, 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 big hands. Check it out. Um, hi, everybody. Thanks for joining us. We're on episode number 274, gosh, of this week in WordPress. Um, by the way, panelists, guests, we're always on the lookout for the, the thing which is most useful as a title. So if somebody says something particularly interesting or cringeworthy or funny, that's going to be the title. So get your pads out and uh, start writing them down if you hear them. But I'm joined today for the 274th episode. You can see right over there is Zubair Sadiq. How are you doing, Zubair? Hi, Nathan. I'm doing good. And it's my third time to be in the show. And it is already feeling like a home to me. Oh, and, uh, nice thing to say. <laughs> uh, and I'm looking forward for the whole episode. Especially looking forward to listen to Andrew. He's such a cool dude and Dafo definitely you know <laughs> I uh, I have three people in my house all of whom are my children who would strongly disagree uh, <laughs> moniker of cool dude anyway let me introduce you correctly uh, Zubair Sadiq is the founder of oh my gosh the WordPress group he's the organizer at Karachi WordPress meetup he's a community manager also at the WP experts agency and it is very nice to have you back uh, for the fourth episode. And because you've said such nice things, I'm having him back every week from now on. Uh, let's see. We'll, we'll see if Andrew and uh, Taco can live up to that. <laughs> Joining no. us. No, it's fine. <laughs> Join us down there. Uh, we've got Taco, Taco Verdon shot from Yoast. How you doing, Taco? It's been a while. I'm good. Yes. Yeah, it's good to be back. Yeah, very, very nice to have you with us. You, you probably have seen Taco around. Taco, of course, as you can see, um, is uh, one of the people from Yoast. In fact, he's the head of relations at Yoast, which means he gets to talk to people like me, plugin developers, theme developers. Everybody in the WordPress space is on Taco's list, which is great. Uh, he's he's into managing the support team over at Yoast and the community team as well. He's also a polyglot because he translates WordPress into Dutch. We will get into that and how jaw-droppingly fascinating that subject is a bit later. He's the co-organizer of the WordPress press meetup. Wait for me to butcher it. Nye Megan. Close enough. Good. Absolutely. He's the father of two, husband to one. Husband. Um, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, Taco really likes the podcasting thing, but is too insecure about his skills to start one on his own. That's oh, interesting. Yeah. <laughs> so he tries to join, join the show regularly. That's really kind. Yeah, I know what you mean. It is a weird thing. Uh, but thank you so much for joining us again. And also, at the last minute, very, very grateful because um, we were due to have Tim Nash, but Tim sadly is unwell. So firstly, get well soon, Tim. I hope you're feeling better soon. But Andrew Palmer stepped into the bridge. There's Andrew. 
Um, you've probably seen Andrew. He's been on the show multiple times before. How are you doing, Andrew? All right. Big shoes to fill. And, um, you know, this is the best, best podcast out there, don't you? you Thank know, you. So that's so that's <laughs> Zabir and Andrew coming back on a regular basis. Uh, well, Zabir, I've met. I mean, Zabir, we met at WordCamp, I think, didn't we? Yeah, WordCamp is, yeah. 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 It is yeah. a small I've been lucky enough to break bread with and have a big steak somewhere in Germany. <laughs> <laughs> yep. It's a small world, the WordPress world. It's lovely. It's a tiny world. And Nathan, of course, you know. Yeah, I used well, to everybody tries to get Nathan. Yeah. Um, let, me give you hand, your, let me give you your official introduction. Uh, he is the C Andrew, I should say is the CEO and co-founder of Bertha AI, which is all the hops at the moment, isn't it, AI? That's a subject which I honestly thought would go away in interest, but it just every week, it's still interesting. He's an investor in multiple businesses, including Atarim, which I'm sure you've heard of, atarim.io, and wppluginsplus.com. And you can also see on the screen, if you're looking, you can find him at somebodieshero.co.uk. Okie doke. Thank you for joining us. Just a couple of bits of housekeeping. There's a couple of things. Firstly, depending on where you are, there's different ways that you can comment. Uh, this is probably the easiest thing to do is if you fancy uh, commenting, go to wpbuilds.com forward slash live. And then you've got two choices now because of the new platform that we're using. The first choice is to be logged into Google. And if you're logged into Google, it's got YouTube comments either side. But also, if you notice in the top right of the video is a little live chat button actually inside the video player. And if you click on that, you don't need to be logged into anything. You just type in your name and we're off to the races. So you can give us comments in there. That's kind of nice if you don't like social media platforms and things like that. Uh, and also that player is coming uh, through on the website as well. So it's all being hosted by the... Uh, by the, the wave.video platform. If you are on Facebook, you've got to go through an additional step because we won't know who you are. And that is you've got to go this wave.video forward slash lives forward slash Facebook on a link over there. Then wave.video can tell us who you are. You can like that. I would appreciate it if you want to share this with your friends. Again, the URL wpbuilds.com forward slash live. That'd be really nice. And uh, give us some comments. We always love your commentary. We've got a few in so far. So let's say hello to Mike Cottom. Afternoon, all. Looking forward to another humor filled episode. Mike, I thought you were in the UK. I don't know why I thought that. Probably because it says good afternoon. The spelling of humor indicates maybe you're not. Um, but hello, Mike. Very nice to have you. Elliot, just down the road from me, says hi. Paul Halfpenny uh, is saying hi as well. Good afternoon, WP. The next podcast episode with Paul. And unfiltered. No doubt I'll be sharing that on social media in the days and weeks to come. Peter Ingersoll, as always, reliable as ever. You can set your clock by it. Good morning from Connecticut in the Northeast US, where it's currently five degrees centigrade and something in Fahrenheit. Nobody cares. On the partly cloudy sky, I've just offended four plus million people. Um, and good morning, Nathan Andrews Zabir from Mark Westgard, the guardian of the Very who is he? Who is he? That's right. And we're also joined by Dave Gray. Good afternoon from an undisclosed secure location somewhere between the M3 and M4 corridor. You've narrowed it down for us, Dave. You've got a fair idea. Oh, he says man flu, Mike Cotton. His ability to spell. He's on the Isle of Man. We'll forgive you, Mike. It's perfectly okay. And thanks, Mike, for submitting your site for Sabrina's show. I appreciate that. Right. Okay. That's to do let me take off that little caption if i can find it there we go and let's share the screen and get on with the show this is our website we're sponsored as you can see by godaddy pro thank you to them for keeping the lights on i really appreciate that if you want to be updated on what we do put your email address in there and click subscribe that's all you got to do it's dead simple as I was just saying, we're doing a few new shows. One of them is with uh, Sabrina Zidane. We're planning to do it each and every week. And we're taking user-submitted sites, if there are any. And if they're not, then Sabrina's just going to find some aspect of web performance that she can suggest you can improve. So far, we've done ho homepage videos, lady lazy loading images, and how to find bottlenecks. It's been genuinely a real eye-opener. It's about 45 minutes long. And you get real nuggets of inspirational, good quality stuff from Sabrina. So we're doing that every Thursday. It's at the same URL as you're watching this now, WPBuilds. 
facebook.com forward slash live. I'm also doing some with um, Leo from Gato GraphQL. You can find these in the demos archive link just there. Archives, demos archive, that's the way to find that. We've also got our Black Friday page. It's growing. It's got about 130 deals on it at the moment, and it keeps going up. During the time I've been talking, I've had three more submitted. Uh, they just <laughs> they just keep coming in. Bertha's on here somewhere. Um, but yeah, if you want to sponsor this page, you can. You can see Mark Westgard has, Gravity Forms have, and check out WC have. But it's searchable, filterable. You know, you just sort of go in and say, I want something to do with maintenance, and you're off to the races. You can filter by the amount of discount and all of that kind of stuff. It's your place for Black Friday. Uh, WPBuilds.com forward slash black. Dead simple to remember that. What was it? I've forgotten. Uh, and finally, if you want to raise some money for a very, very reputable charity, this or uh, non-profit, this is raising money for the WP Community Collective. It's a bit silly, really. You submit yourself or somebody else to be the best at something in this year's award ceremony. And you'll notice this form. These are radio boxes. But each section only has one radio box, so you can't actually vote for anything. You just, all you can do is click the submit button at the bottom. Uh, so it's a bit silly. But all you need to do is if donate $20 to the WPCC, there's a link here on how to do that, then go to your screenshot app of choice, send me the screenshot via this form, and we'll stick you on there. We've raised $751.50 at the moment. And that, believe it or not, is actually going to do a lot of good. I put this anecdotal target of $2,000 up there. I just made the number up. But if we can get to that, wouldn't that be lovely? There are so many worthwhile causes. So here's an example of it. We were talking to Mark a moment ago. The best plug, the best form builder you never realized you needed, you can vote for WS form. In fact, you don't have a choice. If you vote on this, you are going to vote for that. Uh, best WordPress hosting powered by Knights of the Realm, Sentry. Best WordPress blog, David McCann. Best WordPress news provider was Nathan Wrigley, but I didn't send that in. So I then um, I then put in another one somewhere all about the fact that somebody else had put that one in, but I can't remember where that is. Anyway, it's all a yeah. bit of fun. I'm, I'm uh, intrigued by uh, the award that Kyle's winning, though. Kyle is the yes. top tech... tech <laughs> He's the, look at that, the top taco tycoon of WordPress, Kyle Van Dusen. Yeah, you've got to, you've got to submit uh, taco, you know, yeah. you can, so long as you don't use that exact wording, uh, I will, I will take whatever nomination you've got. So let's see if we can get that maybe to a thousand dollars. That'd be really good. And you've That's got 23 good. days to think about it. So yeah. Okay. Great. Let's get stuck into the actual WordPress news. So the three panelists just interrupt whenever you like. It's totally fine. Um, but here we go. WordPress 6.4 is really, really, really close now. We've been droning on about all the features. Sometimes um, things get dropped at the last minute, as they have been in the recent past. But uh, Yoast put together a post just outlining some of the cool bits. Um, we've got this fabulous new theme, 2024. I think it's fair to say that this is the best theme, the best default theme that we've had in years and years and years. It really does look great. It's been essentially, there's four people who it's, uh, who it's pitched at, and I've listed them here, entrepreneurs and small business owners, photographers and artists, um, and websites, uh, writers and bloggers. So that's three, not four. Um, but honestly, with the capabilities and all of the different things that are in there, you really could make this your home, no matter what it is that you're doing on the internet. We'll talk about the adoption of block themes in a moment and how it's not really going all that well. Okay, so there's that. You'll have a lot of fun exploring that if you choose to. But also there's loads of enhancements to some blocks that you've probably been using in the past. So for example, uh, the block editor, it says here, continues to evolve with improvements that promise a more intuitive building experience. Background images for group blocks. That's really handy because group blocks tend to be the parent item of, you know, all the other things that you might want to put in it. So putting a background image on that is really cool. You can also add categories to block patterns. So I don't know, you might have a um, oh, some sort of sales pitch section that you just want to repeat over and over again. You might have an Easter theme set of patterns or a Christmas or whatever it may be. You can have 
categorize those. We mentioned in the past that there's a new light box feature coming so that if you want your images to be small, but then somebody clicks and they all go big and it looks like a really nice implementation. It's not like too weird and snazzy. It just sort of gently pushes out, gently pushes back in. And it reminds me a lot of something you'd find on a phone, uh, to be honest. It's got a smooth, buttery feel to it. You can rename group blocks, which is really handy as well. Um, because if you're anything like me, when you got a post, it just says paragraph, 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 heading, paragraph, 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 heading, heading, paragraph, paragraph, and the ability to rename those kind of things will be really useful in the future. Um, but that's about it really. So I'm going to, I'm going to toss this out to you three, anything in there, which you like the look of. A, a lot. Well, I've been, I've been playing with uh, blocks actually last week. I built a, I built a website with blocks. I cheated slightly because I used cadence, but um, that's not cheating. Tried, You're still yeah, using blocks. Kind of, yeah, still using blocks, but also, but I use native blocks as well. Yep. But I also, I did a tutorial the other day for a little AI plugin that I've got, and um, did it in Gutenberg, and I noticed that go from to go from lists to a new block is actually quite difficult. So, and I didn't figure it out. But I, do I you probably, mean when you're in? creating a list, so you've, you're in a a list. list. So you've got a list and you want to put an image in the middle of that list it was a bit of a head scratcher so i didn't bother i couldn't i just couldn't stop it being a list in the i don't know of a list. I, I do you know what i'm going to throw that one out to the comments because in every list i've made I I've you simply... have to, well no what i did is i split the lists so you made two lists and shoved an image in made, the middle and then put a block in the middle of it that's the only way that i could do yeah it. i think i would have done it that way as well to be honest yeah, but it's just think... a bit annoying you know yeah, i would just yeah. want to press i just wanted to press return a couple of times and have a new block okay and, you know that it, that's it it's just it's just the intuitiveness you know, being Divi and Bertha's built on on Elementor, so I've had to learn Elementor as well, which again I find difficult. But because I'm Divi, you know, I've been Divi since it's Divi one, you know, um, and uh, so it's just not as intuitive as say a page builder like Beaver Builder or Elementor or anything like that. So yeah, but I still enjoyed it, and the site is super fast. I mean, it's oh, now there's one of the reasons to out. do it. Yeah. Out of the box. I mean, all frankly, all my Divi sites are fast, but the, the 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 straight out of the box. I didn't have to do anything. It's really fast. It's got a massive, massive header image as well. So Courtney yeah. Robertson is to the rescue for you, Andrew. Look at this. She's right in there. Andrew, Andrew see Aruba's really super list block. Um, I'm guessing that's a a plugin that you can find uh, for nesting things in blocks beyond the core version. Uh, cool. So there you go. Brilliant. Thank you, Court. That's well, that's cool. great. But also, why isn't it in Core? I'm mm, just saying. Okay. Yep. But thanks. Yep. She's always rescuing me, Court. <laughs> yeah. She's there for us all. Um, all we'll right. talk about her a bit later. So thank you for that. Taco or Zubir? Uh, I think, Taco, you were going to go next because it sounded like you were ready. Yeah. So, uh, obviously, I've seen that post before. Um, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it, it ha yeah. happened to be on Yoast.com. Um, but yeah, no, I, I think definitely the the new theme is a wonderful display of what's possible with uh, the current state of blocks. Um, so yeah, I'm probably going to move some sites over to have a bit of a better play with, uh, with it, but that's looking fabulous. Much later in the show, we're going to talk about the state of um, default themes and all of that kind of stuff and, and whether or not blocks has Block themes have taken off. In short, the answer is not yet. But things like this theme, I reckon, is really quite a compelling mixture because there's just so much that you can do with it. So great. Thank you for that as well. Zubir, anything? Yeah, babes. The last major release for the year 2023, and I'm really excited. The new theme looks really fine, you know, minimalist with a minimalist approach and with a very feature rich theme and light bulb and new development tools and all that. So, uh, yeah, we are all are excited for the WordPress 6.4. Yeah, no kidding. But yeah, so there's a lot of tweaking there. My, my favorite in all of that, though, is the re being able to rename blocks. Yeah. Uh, I know that's a bit ridiculous, but honestly, when I open the inserter on a typical WP builds mm -hmm. post, which is just basically text and headings, it, it's, it's, the inserter is of no use to me unless I click in to the paragraph that I want, and then I can find it. But being able to rename it and saying, I don't know, header and everything obviously that's nested inside that is the header and here's the, I don't know, the the form uh, collection of things. That would be really useful. So all of those kind of things 
uh, coming down the pike. So that's brilliant. So yoast.com forward slash WordPress dash six dash four. You can uh, have a look at that yourself. Now, here's another thing which is coming in WordPress 6.4. And honestly, I have no idea why this wasn't done a long time ago. I genuinely don't know. I'm not trying to be annoying. I don't know why this hasn't happened sooner. So if you are new to WordPress, it may surprise you that every time you upload something like an image, let's just call it an attachment, but image is typically what people put in their media library. Um, that then creates, if you like, a page. It creates a home for that, and it, it's a page so that all the metadata and everything can be bound to it. Now, that typically will never be seen by anybody except maybe Google catches sight of it. I don't know, maybe you've got an XML sitemap, sorry, or a sitemap, just an HTML sitemap or what have you, and, and it might get listed there, or somehow Google may find it. And the Really, it doesn't serve any purpose in your SEO. It may, in fact, spoil it to some extent. So in WordPress 6.4, any new, and I'll repeat that, any new install of WordPress, not your current version, this will not happen. So if you upload an image, you will not get an attachment page for it. If somebody was to figure out what that was, then it would just redirect them to the actual asset itself. So, you know, the, like you find in the metadata, you can actually forward slash, forward slash, forward slash, dot JPEG, whatever it is. Um, now, this just seems perfectly reasonable to me. There's a couple of people who push back with reasons why they thought that maybe this should have been talked about a little bit more. But to my mind, this seems like common sense. And I'm going to... Oh, I want to see the pushback. Ooh. Well, it's not a lot. It really is very little. Uh, it says here, WordPress plugin developer, Cy Cybra. Cybra. Uh, right? Okay, thank you for rescuing me there. Yeah. Um, He's thank Sorry? He's Dutch. Oh, great. Okay. Yeah. So that's, well, in which case, can you just say that whole name? Yeah. Sibre Weyer. Okay. Per I would never have got that. Thank you. Uh, WordPress plugin developer, I refer to what Taco just said, made cases for giving users an option for toggling this on and off. The problem with filtering options is that when other plugins provide the option to toggle, the option filter will go against expectations. So typically, and I'm sure Yoast has an option for this. You can you can toggle them off. You can toggle the option to have that off. Maybe Yoast, uh, Taco can correct me on that. But if now that's going to be in the SEO plugin, but you can't make use of it, is it a bit of a conflict? It's kind of weird. What's going on? So I actually am going to throw that right at Taco. How do you handle this? What's the plan for yeah. the future with you guys? So um, for anyone who already has their WordPress site, you will still need your SEO plugin. Um, to properly manage this. If you've installed Yoast SEO and you haven't messed up your settings, it's uh, already turned off by default. Oh, nice. Because there is, there is no good reason for SEO and, and unless maybe super specific use cases. Um, but for, for most people, there is no good reason to have these pages. They are super thin content. They don't add any value. Um, they just create more links on the web that need to be crawled. They consume power. They distract from your main pages. Um, there's there's no good reason for most sites to have these pages. So um, if you've been using Yoast SEO, they have been off for a very long time. And um, in fact, a couple of years ago, there was a little bug in Yoast SEO that undid our fix, which left through a whole storm. I see it. <laughs> I forgot that. At least he can smile about it. Um, so we've we've been fixing this for as long as I can remember, um, except for a couple of months. When it was you 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 said something then, which I thought was really curious. You said it's got thin SEO. Is that a technical thin, term? Is thin content? Thin content. Yes. Thin yeah, content thin sorry, thin content. content. Is yeah. that the technical term for stuff which basically just doesn't serve the purposes of your site's SEO? It's thin well, as opposed it's to most. The yeah. most interesting thing Taco said was it consumes power. Oh, that's the most interesting thing yeah. because you you've got a website uh, and it also takes up takes up. It, it's another click to buy, isn't it? We're always trying to get people to get to the content that we want them to read and and have a call to action or whatever um, on it. So it it's it's a user distraction as far as I'm concerned. I mean, I always used to before I started using Yoast. Um, plugin because I did used to use another one. Sorry, Tank. Um, and I used to use um, redirect attachment pages. It's a plugin in the in the um, .org repository. But every single SEO plugin 
including Yoast, which I now use, is uh, has a facility to redirect attachments to the content that it's attached yeah. to. Right. If you like. Which is kind of the what you need. Which so, is the right thing to do. And right. I don't agree that it's, I can't even think of a, of a like Taco said, a super, there's just no yeah. could, could this be a use case? Could yeah. it be, let's say that you're a photography, if you're selling photography and you want that metadata that's in there, like, I don't know, dimensions or yeah. something. I don't know if any of that might be useful. Maybe. Well, if, if you're selling photographs, then you probably need an e-commerce solution. That's true. And you need to and hide the original right. anyway, because you're giving it away. Yeah, that's yeah. a good point. But yeah. if, exactly. if you're a photographer and you have a gallery site and you have decent um, descriptions with all. So um, what I was referring to, the thin content, means that you have a page that doesn't have any unique value. It doesn't add anything useful to the web. And typically the attachment pages are the photo or the image and maybe the description if you entered it, but mostly people don't. Um, and that's it. And there's not a whole lot of value there. Yeah. But yeah. if you turn that page into something where you have a description of where you took that picture or you have a, a longer form content that goes with the picture, then maybe. But there's okay. other solutions to do that in a better way. Yeah, yeah. I think the, the long and the short of it is that this, for the vast, vast majority of us, this is how it should be. But um, I'm glad it's gone. Yeah, yeah. Well, then, yes. Yeah. Um, if you um, if you have a new WordPress website, you have nothing to fear. If you have mm -hmm. an old WordPress website, which is existing before 6.4, then, uh, then keep going with your SEO plugin, and it will keep you. It will keep this stuff away from yes. away from Google and what have you. Zibia, anything on that, or shall we move on? Oh, I think Dafo has said everything, and and you as I did value the things. Yeah, all right, thank you. <laughs> yeah, uh, just a couple of comments coming in around some previous stuff that were mentioned. Uh, Courtney, again, she's involved with the WPCC. We were talking about sponsoring it for that silly awards page. Uh, she's just saying thank you for the contributions that have come in so far. Every contribution matters. Um, Mark Westgard is agreeing with that and says, yeah, $20. Oh, by the way, you can donate more. You don't mm -hmm. have to stop at $20. There's a few people who've done more than that, and I appreciate them doing that as well. Um, and da -da -da, Mike is agreeing with you. Uh, Andrew is saying he would have done a list, then an image, then a list, and so would I. But now we know there's a there's another option as well. Okay, this is beyond me, to be honest, because I have not really contributed in the same way that this article is talking about. Um, this is over on makewordpress.org. If you have contributed, maybe I certainly know Taco is involved a lot, being the community person at Yoast. Um, WordPress 6.4 remains on schedule for release tomorrow. Um, afterwards, work needs to be done to release one or more maintenance or minor releases. So this is the normal process of keeping the software going. You know, you can't just go from 6.4 to 6.5. There's all sorts of little things which will crop up and they need to be uh, pulled out into the open. And so key roles need to be uh, filled so that cycle can continue throughout the 6.4 release phase. Um, Release managers are required, and they do things like this. Triaging bugs in coordination with committers and component maintainers. Drafting announcements for the release, so the PR side of things. Preparing for and running release day activities. That's been a, a you know, again, it's PR related, but very important to keep people updated. And updating the documentation on minor releases so that it gets better each time. This is basically a call. For those people, I will link to this in the show notes, and then you can click on the links, which you can see uh, embedded all over this page. And hopefully, if that's your bag, you can start contributing to the WordPress project in that way for the for the bits and pieces between 6.4 and a possible 6.5. Taco, anything on that, knowing that you know this stuff? Yeah, so um, basically, as, uh, as the post already describes, they're looking for people who can manage certain tasks. Um, and I think a minor release is one of the better ways to get into this. Uh, I know Courtney, who's uh, active in, in the comments, um, has been uh, part of a release team before. 
Um, but yeah, it's it's just like you said, another way to contribute to WordPress and getting into it uh, during a minor release takes off a little bit of the pressure from a major release. So um, I would recommend anyone who has any of the skills you just listed uh, to apply and be part of uh, of those teams. Nice. Thank you. Sabir, Andrew, anything on that? Shall we move on? Yeah, I guess uh, those who are interested and those who are capable, they must contribute. And it's a great chance for them to begin their contribution. Yeah, great chance. Oh, yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm incapable, so correct. that's fine. No, you can no, okay. You're incapable, is that what you just said? Oh, well, I couldn't. I couldn't be a contributor to WordPress. I just, I'd just be. I wouldn't work. I'd just do WordPress. I don't just be a contributor. <laughs> Let's you'd see. have the you know right stuff and all that. And then once you get into it, I mean, I know I do know a few WordPress contributors, and they just wish they could just contribute to WordPress because they love it so much. And that's the problem is when you get the, into the, you know, when you go behind the ropes, an old golf term there from me. <laughs> you kind of just want to stay behind the ropes because. It's, it's nice and comfy and you're feeling as though you're solving a problem. So if I got involved in that, I wouldn't actually earn any money. So I oh, see. Not. Okay. Okay. I get it. Yeah. Yeah. You need to be able to manage your time. Uh, so again, yeah. it's triaging bugs, drafting announcements, P other assorted PR stuff and updating documentation. Um, if you're into any of those, even if you're just mm -hmm. curious, why not just see uh, what comes of it? So the post will be linked to in the show notes, which will come out tomorrow. All righty. Now, we mentioned this one already kind of in passing, but I'll, I'll point to the article because there's a little bit more to be said. This is Gutenberg 16.9. So this is not WordPress 6.4. This is the sort of the, the, the bleeding edge, if you like, of Gutenberg. And there's a couple of interesting things coming down the road. The first one, as we mentioned earlier, there's going to be this option to rename almost all of the blocks. And in fact, the only things that you won't be able to rename, if I've read this correctly, are these things, uh, the core block, um, core forward slash template part, core forward slash pattern and core forward slash navigation. I'm sure that if you use your imagination, you could imagine why they shouldn't be renamed. They probably, <laughs> I imagine your site will break rather rapidly if they were allowed to be renamed. Anyway, pretty much everything else can be renamed. So that'll be really exciting in the future. So almost any block of any description, you'll be able to give it a different name. There's a little video here sort of showing how that works. Essentially, it's a bit like you would do on Photoshop or something. You you right click or you click the little three, three icons and then you just click rename, little modal pops off and you give it whatever you want to call it and you're off to the races. That's how that works. But here's a surprise. And what the heck, like what, um, there's going to be forms. There's an experimental form and input block allowing the creation of basic forms. Now, Mark Westgard, you are in the comments. I want your actual response to this. So I didn't think that WordPress would ever get into the form creation space because I, I just thought that was plugin territory. Now. It says basic building of forms. Now, I, I do wonder what that means. Is it just like name, email, comment? Is that the, the length and the depth that they're going to go to? But you're going to be able to play with this by going to, first of all, you'll have to download the Gutenberg plugin. Then you go to Gutenberg experiments and you'll need to enable the uh, form and input blocks experimental setting. Now, uh, we've got Mark Westgard from WS Form in the comments. Maybe he'll drop something in there. But also in the text here, we have Carl Hancock, who is one of the co-founders of Gravity Forms. And he, he asks this, I think, fairly reasonable question. Why has there been no proactive outreach to reach to the many developers of longstanding WordPress form solutions currently used by millions and millions of WordPress sites? That, that in summarizes it. But he then goes on to say, it's a bit more philanthropic than that. He goes on to say, look, we've got a wealth of experience. We really know how to do forms. Maybe we could have helped this enterprise. Maybe there's pitfalls that you're going to you know, fall into that we won't. So very, very early stages of development. I just thought that was curious. Um, and I'm wondering what you guys think. So over to you, interrupt as necessary. I, I think Courtney's comment um, that she just posted is super relevant perfect 
Shall I just read it out? So Courtney, as always on the case, I believe the forms area isn't functional. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, just adding the field input areas for styling. I think the user would still need to get a form plugin. This would really help theme styling forms. Okay, so there's no news here. Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> but the article definitely reads in a different way. So either I've misunderstood what the article was saying, or the article has misunderstood what this is about, or Carl has misunderstood. Mm. I don't really know. It probably falls on my shoulders and I've misunderstood it. But Courtney, thank you for... Well, I'm going to go out there and build one and see see whether that is the case, because I believe Courtney, but... Yeah. Um... I just don't see the point in having the form fields in there and then installing another form plugin of which there are many. And we have a favorite. We know WS form is our favorite. And I still, I love gravity forms as well, but it's not something that hasn't, you know, Elementor have a form, Divi have a form, Beaver Builder have a form, all the, all the major site origin has a form building thing. Then we've got contact form seven, which is if you're a, developer you know you can make contact form 7 do anything you like it's an amazing free plugin and it's never ever been commercialized but i think carl's point of why was there no discussion with people that have got forms is the same kind of reasoning behind why woo.com announced woo express but maybe we can get into we'll that, that later because there's plenty of people out there that do woo plugins and um, woo express may Naff that up for them for a little bit, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah, so it, that's interesting because I, I totally did read it as you would be able to make use of these forms. They weren't just Me too. Sort of, um, forms that you could use in order to generate styles and things. If that were the case, uh, as Courtney seems to be saying it is, then, the, the, you know, being able to put a form on the website without a form plugin so that you can then give it some stylings and what have you, that's an interesting use case. But yeah, okay, Taco or Zubir, anything on this? Where go ahead. <laughs> uh, no, I do not have anything specific for this. Uh, if Taco can add anything. Yeah, so um, what I find interesting is that WordPress doesn't have any forms because it is one of the basic things that we add to every website. Yeah. And even yeah. if we look at WordCamp websites before the WordCamps announced, the one thing that's on the page is sign up for more information by entering your email address here, um, which is a form. So it's interesting that WordPress never had this. Um, at this point, introducing something very basic, um, even if it were functional, uh, might be nice for some people, but anyone with slightly bigger demands would still need um, a decent forms plugin. So that's a really good point. So you're right, aren't you? Mm -hmm. Like there is no website, there's almost no website where a form, even just that email field, just one field at yeah. some point wouldn't, wouldn't be useful. And so straying into that territory does now that you've said that, it does seem like something that's been missing from WordPress. But given that it hasn't been there, um, it does seem odd to be sort of throwing it in there. So I guess that's just a, a consequence of the history of the project that we've had. But yeah, framing it like that does seem to make perfect sense. Let's see, Mark Westgard has chipped in a few things. So just for context, Mark has a form plugin of his own, as Andrew said, WS form. He said, adding forms to core is a strange move. I think there is definitely more that I think there are definitely more important things that should be focused on. It's like WordPress adding SEO functionality to core. There are Which plenty we of recently did, by the way. Well, ah. recently, but about a year ago, we added XML sitemaps to WordPress core. Yeah. Yep. Which has been a feature for SEO plugins since forever. Yeah. Um, he goes on to say, there are plenty of good plugins out there for SEO. Yoast. <clears throat> is what he says. Uh, yeah, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> the likes of WS form, gravity form, fluent forms, etc., are incredibly complicated. It seems like a strange journey to start on. Yeah, okay. So maybe that's the fear, right? Is that if you build something basic, does that then mean that something complicated is coming down the pipe? My intuition would be that that wouldn't be the case, but who, well, who knows? Well, actually, in Divi, they did, they did a basic form. Uh-huh. 
which people complained just generally didn't work. But it, it's, you know, sometimes you need an SMT p p SMTP right, pipe, right? right? Yep. Because yep. hosts don't, some hosts and some, some web servers don't allow you to send mail without doing it through SendGrid or whoever or whatever. Yep. But, um, the, so the, it is a dangerous area for them to get involved with because one of the main complaints with Divi was that the form didn't work. It didn't have enough in it. it you couldn't, you couldn't do date picking. You couldn't do all sorts of stuff. And when you look at WS form and fluent forms and gravity forms, they're incredibly complex, not just for somebody who knows how to build a form like me and Taco and Zubir and all you as well, Nathan, but imagine trying to, trying to make a logic form or a funnel form out of, out of, so, oh, great. WordPress has got a form. I'll build that form. Then we're okay. I need it to go on to the next page or, and I need it to save those entries and all those kind of stuff. And I need it to, to choose my calendar time and I need a date picker in it. And actually while I'm on here, Mark Westgard, please put a date picker in that puts the UK format in as well. <laughs> and and all form people don't, it's not all about America. It's, you know, we've that's got great. the right, we do it the right way as far as I'm concerned. So that's, that, that's the thing about form pickers. But the thing is, is that they are complex. And if they are going to go down this road, it's a very dangerous road. I'd prefer them to have a look at the database, how it, how WordPress queries the database, make that much faster or much more efficient, make, make database entries deletable from within WordPress without destroying the, the, the website. There are so many different things to be done. A form seem, seems agrarious, however you would say that, Nathan, because you're yeah, egregious. egregious, egregious. Thank egregious. you. So, yeah, okay. you know, the. It just seems pointless to me. Leave it to the guys that know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. been around. That's an interesting point, though, about the SMTP settings, because obviously on a typical WordPress host that you uh, run, you know, yourself, so we're not talking about WordPress.com, your forms are out the box. They are not going to work. And so if you do put something in core, you are introducing a point of failure there. However, uh, contrary to what we've been talking about so far, Paul, uh, Paul Halfman, he's joined in the conversation. And he says, if WordPress wants to compete with services such as Wix and Squarespace, which of course I think more and more it does, uh, then a basic form builder would be necessary, uh, a necessary feature. Mike says it may start with forms and it could end up being a slippery slope and a deep rabbit hole. I think maybe mm -hmm. that's what Andrew was thinking. You have to put Mark's reply yeah. in there. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, Mark's, Mark's replying to the date picker. WS form does support UK date pickers. No, 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 no. It adheres to your <laughs> date site formatting <laughs> settings. Fix your settings, Palmer. The <laughs> 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 great I'm feature hungry. request not needed in this day. <laughs> <laughs> That's perfect. Well, Lovely. knowing Mark, he might just have added it in the last 30 seconds. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You never know with that snake. I'll tell you. I, I, got, snake I woke up this morning to, uh, to find a Slack message from the weekend for something that Mark had added to WS form that I requested. It was great. <laughs> This happens more than is necessary. <laughs> this is just some pointless little feature. Uh, so, for example, for the WP, um, for the uh, oh, the Black Friday page, I wanted square images. Only square images would be acceptable because if, if they're not square, every some people's uh, product looks better than others. And so Mark built a ratio setting into the image upload field. So you could say one-to-one -one is the only acceptor. And it totally works. Now I only get square images. Every year, it's Amazing. been a nightmare until now. So, oh, thank you for your Amazing. your hard work. So, uh, Michelle's giggling at that. That's <laughs> great. Okay, so we've got forms. That's coming in some way, shape, or form. Courtney, thank you for correcting us on that. There's also a couple of quick things. Um, new media categories for audio and video, so you can organize your media uh, slightly better. Hopefully, in the next like little that. while, we'll have a, an updated media library, so that'll be nice. You can sort... Pages by date in the editor's management screen. The command palette, which is like Spotlight on a Mac, uh, has block-specific com commands and contextual suggestions, which I think is really cool. You know, if you're somewhere on the site, it doesn't make sense to pop up suggestions for something which you really probably have got no intention. And there's an added feature, sorry, image field um, as an experiment to the page list as well. Well, that, so, no, oh, that, 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 mm -hmm. don't just run over that. That's okay. really important. That Tell is me more. really important. Well, because when you're in the list, so I'm talking about page lists. So you've got all the lists of what's in your page and you've got SEO bits and you've got other bits in there as well. To have to go to the page and I'm mm. presuming we, 
and see whether you've got a featured image because some people just forget, you forget. And also when we're editing, when we're, when we're going into, cause somebody's hero.co.uk do build websites and we also edit other people's websites for us to be able to, um, drill down and see which pages haven't got featured images in. That's fantastic. That just, is a very, very good point. Um, so yeah. it'll appear on the list, by the way, uh, hmm. and this is a plug for a free plugin, so it's not a plug for a free, but that's hard to say. Um, this cool. is cool. I mean, I don't know what the, what it does in terms of bloat, but this is a really nice plugin and it handles what you just said. So it adds a featured image, but this is, it's called admin and site enhancements. I wasn't meaning to suggest this, but when you said that, I thought I'll stick it up on the screen. So it sure. adds a ton of different options to the admin of WordPress and you basically toggle things on and off and you can see it's absolutely boatloads. Uh, they've, they're all pretty minor, you know, none of them are particularly massive, but one of the things it does is it adds in SMTP free. You can do your SMTP there. It, you know, it doesn't keep a log or anything technical like that, but it allows your email to egress. You can do things like disable XM, XML RPC and all of that. But here somewhere, 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 one of these things is add uh, a featured image into the list view of WordPress. And uh, so, yeah, this is cool. Admin and site enhancements. It's very, very nice. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Oh, thank you. Um, it was not me. Thank you to Bowo, the contributor of that. Um, right. Thanks. That's the GitHub There's repo. A competing the plugin to that one, uh, Nathan. Mm. Um, uh, and that's by, uh, it's called Admin Columns. Oh, yeah. That's um, great, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, they've, they've been sponsors of several WordCamps, so they deserve a shout out. Uh, yeah, thank well, you. You're absolutely right. I've got the pro version here just because that's what yeah. Google gave me straight <laughs> off the bat. But they do have a free version. Yes. And they do an awful lot more than add in the free image. You know, you can more yeah. or less put anything in there. I remember a few years ago, I built a real estate website and obviously the client wanted to see almost all the details about the houses. And, and so you could, if it was metadata, you could add it into the list view. And it, it was yeah. just, this was the way to do it. This plugin was was really great. So admin columns, this is admin columns pro, but I'm, there is a free version on the repo, which handles a subset. Of they're, they're amazing. These plugins, cause I normally ask for my dev to, cause we, with Bertha and everything, we would, we needed to add a listing for, um, stuff in the WooCommerce, um, page list display for particular reasons. And, um, it took me about two minutes, you know, cause yeah. it's just a little function. Oh, it's but, a you snippet. Know, it's, yeah. Function, it's almost nothing. Yeah, 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 yeah. And to make it searchable, you've got these 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 plugins out there. Woohoo! Yep. Yeah, it's uh, it doesn't take long. Uh, you can do yeah. that with yeah, a, a quick snippet will get you there, uh, get you to the races. Okay. Alrighty. So this is probably the biggest news of this week. I mean, it's not really news because it not nothing's really happening except it's a PR thing, but it's a big thing, I guess. And that is to say that during the course of this week, WooCommerce kind of is no more. It still is, but it's kind of isn't. Um, it's a bit of both. So WooCommerce is, is basically now becoming Woo. So if you were to go to WooCommerce, you're now going to, I think you're going to be redirected. Let's hope they did that already. But, um, I clicked on this and you can see in the URL bar, I'm on woo.com. Uh, I've been mentioning Woo as the name for WooCommerce forever, just because it's quicker and every single person in the, in the WooCommerce, sorry in the WordPress space knows out of the box what that means. Whether or not there's a job of PR reaching out to the wider world who now are like, what the heck, what's woo? That sounds weird. It's a bit too jocular. It's a bit too frivolous. Don't know. I like it. The plugin itself, I believe. So here we go. Woo is how we're going to refer to the brand and the company. So the website and the name of the thing. WooCommerce is still the open source e-commerce platform for WordPress, Woo's core product. So I don't, I don't know if that suddenly made things that would have been easy, a little bit more difficult. I don't know. But um, anyway, seismic change. If you're into e-commerce, you're going to be on the phone a bit over the next few weeks, suddenly explaining to all your clients. Yeah, it's the same thing. Because my understanding is you won't have to do anything. Let's wait and see if that happens. But the intention is if really you don't need to do anything, it's just a PR thing. The name is changing, but hopefully nothing else should change. If you're a developer, this won't be news to you because you've probably been told already, but it's a big thing. And I wonder how much they paid for woo.com. That strikes me as quite a hot 
a hot Interesting. property. But the, you know why they've done this, Nathan, don't you? So that they can have woo commerce, woo booking, woo subscriptions. You yep. know, it's always yep. been the... It's always been insane. So rather than Woo Commerce subscription, so it's just basically Woo colon anything else. So yeah. it allows them, Woo. The next thing we're going to see, yeah, controversially, is going to be Woo hosting. There you go. So yeah, so think a perfect example here is Woo Commerce Payments recently got renamed to Woo Payments. There you go. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, to me that works because I'm in the WordPress space. But Woo Commerce, if I was a total newbie to 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 the web and you know i'm a 16 year old building my first website woocommerce tells me what it is a bit more i know it sort of doesn't but woo if i wasn't really familiar with that brand maybe not so i guess that's the job is to make woo an obvious you know landing spot and if you go there you're going to know that it's all about e-commerce um just very quickly before i hand it over to you guys properly um there's another article here on the tavern about the exact same thing and where was it? There was something about Woo Express as well. It's right there where it says where it's yellow. Yeah, just here where I've highlighted it. Yeah, Woo mm. Express, another recently launched product that already bears the shorter name. Um, yeah, so Woo Express is kind of like a, a managed version, you know, pay your money and you've got a Woo Commerce managed, website. Managed hosting. Managed hosting. So mate, you think that'll become Woo Hosting, do you, as opposed to Woo Express? Well, there's going to, there's, but I think there's, Woo Express is the first step. Because they're obviously using WordPress.com as the hosting. Yep, yep. But then because brands split out, you know, we've got to think about WP Engine and Flywheel, you know, so Flywheel is going to be brought into WP Engine, but I think you can still buy Flywheel. Then you've got um, the company that bought Yoast, Newfold Digital. I think they've got somebody on our panel who can categorically tell us the answer to that. 30, 40, 50, 60, 80 separate hosts. So, you know, and up. 150 More. whatever it may be but it's just so so you'll have because woo hosting says it all right so that's going to compete with wp engine kinsta rocket all the big names that you can think of guru all say they specialize in managed wordpress e-commerce hosting right that's their sales point so i think automatic have got to be careful in really trying to dive into the GoDaddy Pro arena, the WP Engine arena, and all that kind of stuff, and, and kind of degrading the offerings that the third-party people offer. Um, it starts with Woo Express because we've got Bantu plugins, we've got Yith, we've got many other WooCommerce solutions out there. And once you start going down the road of Woo Express, nobody's got a choice anymore. So you've got mm. to be careful of when you take the choice away and what choices people have. So from an, for an open source product like WooCommerce, because it is open source, to all of a sudden become gatekept is a little bit of a spit in the eye to the people that have helped WooCommerce grow. Which this is, is always the, the difficult tightrope to tread, isn't it? Is exactly Yeah, it's that. a tough yeah. one because mm. also, obviously Automatic have to make money. I think they paid what... 100 million for WooCommerce a few years ago. So they've got a, I don't, I'm not even sure they've got that back yet. But, you know, it's tough. It's a tough type. It's that tight route rope that Automatic have got to walk. Um, but if it degrades the sales of people like Barn2 and other, other, other growing um, WooCommerce plugin developers, then almost shooting yourself in the foot. Anything on that, Yoast? Uh, sorry, Taco. I just sorry. called you Yoast. That's fine. Because I looked down and the word that's... that I saw was Yoast. <laughs> there's there, there's oh, worse the things to call me. Yeah, yeah. Yoast. that's right. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. So when you um, uh, when you said, I'm curious for how much they, they acquired that domain, I was like, I'm wondering for how long that domain has been registered. And Have you had a look? Have you just checked? Yes, of course I did. <laughs> yeah, years, uh, I'll bet. So on the 22nd of January, 1996, wow, it's probably was registered. <laughs> um, that's an ancient domain. I wonder if, I mean, I have no conception. We could obviously look at the Wayback Machine, but I've no idea if that was used for like a personal blog or a serious business or what have you. But somebody 
So yeah. somebody, we're going to get to a story about, in fact, let's pivot to that quickly now, because it is kind of really interesting. This is totally unrelated, but related. Uh, this week, so let's imagine that you bought woo.com. Uh, what is that? Like millions of years ago, ages, I can't do this. Yes. Uh, ages and ages ago, you probably had a really amazing payday uh, very recently, probably a retirable amount of money. Yeah. So probably. the last update on the domain was 21. December okay. 21. So if they didn't have the domain before that, because it might be another update, but then, yeah. Yeah. yeah it would have been like $9 or something like that. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> um, so to change tax to play on that. That's for sure. Well, yes. Yeah. It depends where you live, I guess. Um, so yeah. So here's, a, here's another thing apropos of nothing, not related, but we'll throw it in there. Cause it's quite interesting this week. Um, Google, so Google, it's Google, but it's not Google, Google registry. So you can't actually register these through Google because they've sold that arm of their business to Squarespace. But obviously at some point before they sold it to Squarespace, they obviously acquired the, the rights to sell the dot I N G, uh, domain ending, and they've released it out there. There's a bunch of third party providers. I, I can't tell you where they are but they're listed somewhere there's a there's a few of them at the bottom of this post uh, Nathan is, right uh, no not that far to the bottom da, 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 there's, da. there's an overview with some brands okay can't somewhere. see can't see can't see don't never mind no. No. but it, it's 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 actually funnily enough it's not the usual suspects GoDaddy's in there so I guess that is a usual suspect but then there's a bunch of other hosting uh, domain registry companies that I personally hadn't heard of, and I'm, I'm guessing they're American. But um, anyway, so you can buy things like designing. Actually, you can't because that's gone. Uh, making, editing, adapting, dump, dumpling. What the heck? Uh, drawing. You get the idea, right? Um, if you <laughs> if you want a really good one, you're going to have to separate yourself with about one hundred and thirty thousand dollars a year. So, you know, if you want wedding, ha, <laughs> but you know what, if you, if you get that domain and you are in that line of work, that probably is worth every penny because it suddenly makes you have that, that domain. But I tried a few out. I tried podcasting, you know, cause, and uh, yeah, I would basically have to remortgage my house. Um, if you wait a little while, if nobody grabs it, I think the price is going to go down. We're in this sort of sunrise period. And as the days go on. Um, then yeah, you, uh, you'll be able to get it, but I don't know if you've got any good ideas for domains that you would like to buy with these kind of things, inking, so dumpling. Yeah. Getting the, the interesting one obviously is that we should all sponsor you to get podcasting. Yeah. Uh, nice. Thanks. Yeah. 3,600 something. Oh, is that what it's gone down to? Yes. <laughs> okay. So a few days ago, so it is this period where it declines in. So for the first couple of days i think it was all of it was really expensive and then it went down a little bit and down like the ones which are really really short and real english words they're yeah. still more expensive but if you just type in some random junk i think it's like 14 dollars a year or something so what is it three thousand dollars to get podcasting uh, well yeah in euros so it's around four thousand dollars okay yeah. yeah i'm yeah. uh i'm still not going to do it <laughs> so the interesting thing is the, the one that I expected would be um, registered right off the bat is obviously search engine Bing. Yeah, and it isn't. It's not. It's, not. it's <laughs> all available. I know. That's exactly <laughs> what I did. That and, was like my second 120,000 euro, you know. How did you... Let, let's just play with this for a bit. Where, where did you... Go, go, GoDaddy.com. Go, say again. GoDaddy.com. Ah, okay, okay. So you can do it over there. So if I go to GoDaddy.com, and then I can so just type it in. So web dot in web hosting. Yes, is six hundred and eighty two pounds a year. I mean, if I was a web host, I'd pick that up because uh, it's yeah. annual. Let's not forget, it's not just no, three it's grand. not a one time. It's, yeah, I wonder if I've got thing. some ad blocker script because i had this same problem before so i'm on brave let's just see if turning a few things off yeah yeah, you go yeah. so 608 so this is in pounds so you can get web yeah. hosting for 682 pounds let's try let's try taco's one out i bet he's gonna bought it whilst i've been talking about this no, Pod, no i'm joking uh podcasting 
3,150. What about Bing then? What does it cost us to get Bing? <laughs> yeah. 105. But that's cheaper. That was definitely a lot more money. That was in the 130s. So that's gone. How have Microsoft not picked that up? That's absolutely surprising. Yeah. Let's try one more. Let's try, oh, I don't know, wedding or something like that. Wedding. Uh, these ones typically I found. You see, that's not, look at that. <laughs> if you're in some kind of wedding type business, that does seem yeah. like a pretty good deal. There's no guarantee of you getting them either, Nathan. If you look, um, it's priority, priority pre-registration. Yeah. Um, oh, I see. On... You go into a queue, do you? Yeah. So yeah, some, it you know, might be, be that Microsoft will let you bidding on Ding. Yeah. You can I imagine. Mean, bidding. We got to. We got to get rid of it. Let's do right? it. Bidding. Bidding. What's that going to be worth? High limit. Oh. Oh. Three hundred six. You got to imagine eBay's going to go for that one. Three hundred seven. You see, we're all suckers. <laughs> away. Well, but but then the interesting thing is because you can have this domain and it sounds fancy. Except that you have to explain to everyone that your domain is um, bid.ing yes. and not bidding.com. Yeah. Well, That's I read a really right. interesting I article. Did, that, that, I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't subscribe to that tactic. Okay? When you and I, you can poke me in the eye when you see me next, but I really don't. We've got .co, we've got .co. We've had to live with it for years, only haven't been able to have .co. You've got .nl. I mean, what does that yeah. mean? Well, you know, but that's just... the interesting thing for for a Dutch web shop. I will guess that it's .nl. For hmm. an English brand, I will guess it's .com, and usually that's correct. But I will understand that, for example, .amsterdam, which exists, is a legit domain. My hmm. mom will think that she's missing part, and she will type .amsterdam .nl yeah. because. Yeah. There has to be dot and L, right? So um, I I think that maybe generations who are more used to the web will understand that this is a thing, but it will take some time for it to be useful. My guess is that if you are after these regular words, uh, having said what you just said about the fact that it, this is some sort of bidding process, my guess is that you're probably going to be outbid. You know, like running, you can imagine the likes of Nike and Adidas and all of that kind of going after something like that but oh, yeah. apparently you know that's a new thing so if you want yosting, to do... i've just got a well, yosting i tried yosting. seoing seoing was still yosting available. is 16 pounds 30 a year do it <laughs> no don't do it because yost.com is actually better isn't it uh but yeah so it does drop down i think the cheapest you can get them you know if i put into some, some sort of random string like that that's the hot one look at that kyd big there you go. That's as cheap as you're going to get it. £16.30 a year for really junky ones. But anyway, so somebody did really well out of woo.com. That's all we know. But we don't know well who done they are. You. But they're now probably living in Mauritius. So address is to be decided. Okay, moving on. We were talking about translations earlier and about how documentation and things need to be done. I, okay. Can I just say, if you don't know anything about translating WordPress, which I didn't, and so this is not front end, this is not translate your website with a plugin like WPML or Translate Press or something. This is about getting the project translated so that anybody who wants to build a WordPress site can rock up and find out um, how to do it in their language. So it's the learn materials, it's the all of the WordPress.org materials. I was totally staggered by the utterly breathtaking amount of work which goes into this. And the spaghetti, I use that word in the podcast, the spaghetti of how that process is handled at the moment. Now, thankfully, the likes of Estella Rueda and Courtney Robertson in the comments and Javier Casares, they are on a mission uh, to tidy up this process and improve it and Honestly, I was really staggered. I'm so lucky that I speak English for a start and I, you know, everything's in English. So if I want to build a website, I know it's all there. Uh, democratizing publishing is the endeavor. But if you speak, let's say, I don't know, or from Cambodia and you speak near or something like that, and you don't speak any English, that project is going to be a little bit, a lot more 
difficult. And so hopefully in the near future, with the initiatives that Stella is suggesting, hopefully this will all be tidied up. And it was just such an interesting conversation about what's being done. And so I'm going to give this one straight to Taco, who translates into Dutch. And maybe you can tell us how jolly tricky it is. Yeah. So uh, who should be translating into Dutch? Because it, it's a very, very time consuming uh, thing. And I don't spend enough time on it, unfortunately. Um, but yes, every sentence, every word in WordPress uh, has to be translated. Um, where a machine translation oftentimes misses context. So it is all manual work for all of the languages that WordPress supports, for all of the plugins, all of the themes. Um, it, we're talking about hundreds and thousands of words that need to be translated for every release. But also if you've got, like in Spanish, apparently there are 14 variations of the Spanish language, which oh, I didn't yes. know. There's yeah. Catalan, there's regular Spanish, there's variants in South America. I could have got that number wrong, but I'm, I'm pretty sure yeah. 14 was in my head. Yeah. Um, they're going to try and slimline that process down. Um, and they're going to, I think it was eight. They're going to pick eight languages, which are going to be the focus for the near future, because they've worked out from the download statistics and where those, where, where WordPress is being downloaded, that they can capture I think 98% of downloads are represented by these eight languages. And that's treating, for example, Spanish as one language. They're not going to go for the 14. They're just going to say, okay, well, for now we'll do Spanish as this one Spanish. Yeah. But that seems like a good way to start. And then from there, once this new workflow and the new processes and the new tools, which are being built by Javier and others, uh, once those have been embedded and the, the workflow is all sorted out and everybody knows what they're doing, uh, the idea would then be to, you know, migrate that to all of the everything so that 100% is covered. Right. I'm eating cashew nuts and I've just got one in my throat. So over to you while I <laughs> clear me. Don't die, please. <laughs> yeah. So um, I, I get where they're coming from. The downside of the current state of translations is that if I have a um, Dutch translation, so I'm using Dutch on my website, if there is no Dutch translation for a specific word, sentence, uh, string, um, it will fall back to English. Um, the thing with all the Spanish languages and all the Portuguese variations that we have, uh, because Obviously, in Portugal, they speak Portuguese, but they do so in quite a few countries uh, across the world. And the same goes for Spanish, something colonialism. Um, uh, if you Guilty. use, I think it's Brazilian Portuguese, and there's no translation, it will fall back to English. Oh. And falling back to Spanish, which might, or uh, Portuguese, sorry. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, which which might be the better solution for uh, Brazilian users. Then again, there's a reason why they're separate because they are, even though in nuance, different languages. The fact that we have U.S. English, U.K. English, Australian English, uh, South African English. I don't know how many versions of English there are, but it is because the languages are. Slightly different. Um, you noticed the humor earlier in this episode, um, missing a U. Yeah. Well, that was American spelling. So if you were using WordPress um, in the US setting, then it wouldn't be there. But switching to the UK translation yes. of WordPress, there should be. So even um, where you said, I'm happy I speak just English, there's no such thing. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Jeff, right. Oh, I've it, lost count of the amount of times Americans have, have corrected my spelling, my English spelling. I oh, mean, I see. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hundreds, yeah, yeah. hundreds yeah. of times. Yeah. And really quite nasty about it as well. You're it's, spelling that wrong. And it's kind of interesting. Focused. Yeah. When I you write know, the a word blog focused, post. it's got two S's. And, yeah. Or, do you, you, know, you include a Z? Like categorization or like we yeah, do exactly. with an S? Hospitalization. Yeah. That doesn't exist yeah. in, in our English language, hospitalization. It's not a word. It doesn't. 
anesthesiologist. That doesn't exist in England. Oh, yeah, you know, we have anesthetists. Oh, we could go down a rabbit hole here. Who would you go? Oh, you know, but yeah, they, again, but in Dutch, then you've got Dutch and Afrikaans. You've got de derivatives of it. You've got many African countries speak French, Spanish, Portuguese, Dutch. Um, amazing amount of languages in Africa. Amazing. Amazing amount of languages. So you've it's got severe. then you've got the South Americas. You've got the like you say the Catalan speakers in Spain and and Portugal. North Portugal speaks a different to South Portugal. And North Spain speaks different to you know. You go to Jerez, try to speak the Spanish that you've learned on the on the on the coast on the south coast. They'll look at you and go, "What are you trying to say?" You know, like the South of France and North <laughs> France. It's different. It's different it's, intonation, nuances, accents. It's a complicated mesh. And th this and was the thing know, that you came go to out England, of yep. Manchester, Birmingham, you know, all this kind of stuff. It's just different words. Give up. How yeah. can anyone understand Ganyam? You know what Ganyam means, Taco? I have no idea. It's an English word, Ganyam, or a couple of English words, Ganyam. And it's Geordie in North, North Newcastle, but I'm going home. I'm Ganyam now. Ganyam. Crazy. Ganyam. That, Ganyam. Is, that is crazy. I don't live that far from Newcastle and I've never heard it. So that's fascinating. Yeah. I, uh, I'm not mixing with the right Geordies. Um, Zubir, yeah, no. where are you? Oh, uh, I'm into a little bit polling lot things. I have already uh, unlocked my uh, translation badge and I am, I am uh, doing already doing the translation of the WordPress things into Urdu language. Uh, in Pakistan, we speak Urdu and our neighbor country is India. They speak Hindi. We verbally understand each other language, but our scripts are different. <laughs> so this is the issue. Around 1.5 billion people understand each other verbally and our scripts are different. So we are putting the different efforts. Yeah. <laughs> Did you say yeah. B? Billion? Yeah, yeah. yeah. India, yeah. Billion, yeah. yeah, around. Yeah, two countries. If you collect them, they are <laughs> almost 1.5 billion. <laughs> yeah. India is around 1.2 and 3 and we are, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, and, and so, okay, so you're involved in this enterprise and how how is it for... Okay, you're steeped in WordPress, so you know where to go, I'm guessing. You know what to look for. But let's say that you gave WordPress, like build a WordPress site with no knowledge to a friend of yours who didn't use WordPress and they didn't speak, let's say, English. Let's just go yeah. with that one. How tricky would it be to, to manage being an Urdu speaker? Uh, okay, uh, it will be a little bit difficult, but in Pakistan and in India, we learn English language from the very starting of our year. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so we know it very well. In fact, our new generation don't know our regional script and things, but we know English language uh, very well. So this is the one thing. Uh, the, this is the advantage that we have in subcontinent. But uh, I can feel for the people who, you know, at countryside and don't know about the English language. Right. Yeah, right. and there are so many variations around, you know, uh, we have around 250 or 400 types of different languages in India and Pakistan. <laughs> so it's a huge thing. It's a huge thing. And uh, that all, also the issue is that you left to right and right to left script as well. Oh. So one of the contexts or one of the jargon, if Evan uh, didn't get the translated in that language, so it comes back in English and it creates a disturbance with the script. So... These are things are the matter. Uh, I've also found the interface of the translation is a little bit difficult for the beginner. It should be made a much easier. And what have already been done should be clearly known to the people who are joining the translation. So they don't put effort on the things that have already been done. Right. And that was kind of the, 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 the purpose of that podcast was to let yeah. people know where things are at right now. And Courtney makes the point. I, I did try to make this point, but I don't think I've made the point uh, clear enough. This is not just WordPress.org. It is, it is all of it, really. Yeah. You know, it's docs, it's training, it's or training slash learn. Uh, there's a whole lot more. And and if really, th there are tons of, I'll just show, there's, there's a bunch <laughs> of links in the show notes for that podcast episode provided by Courtney and Javier and Estella. Um, which will give you a real, a real quick deep dive into right. this project and how you can become involved. But also just to let you know, because honestly, if like me, this is an area that you just didn't delve into, it is a huge, like beyond huge, massive piece of work like, that just is invisible to me because I've never really touched it. So 
Yeah. Good grief. Yeah. Thank you, Courtney, yeah. and all the people who are involved in this in any way, shape or form. It's God's work. It really is. Um, if if yeah. you have five minutes to spare um, while listening to the to the podcast, go to translate.wordpress.org and just have a look how much yeah. we translate it. So the enterprise is to get new new um new workflows, new tooling, and they're just trying to figure it out at the moment. And so yeah, go and listen to that podcast episode or just read the transcription, which is uh in English. <laughs> oh. No, oh, okay. All right. Let's let, let's yeah, at least there is one, I suppose, is something to be said. Okay, very quickly, I was chatting to Rimka Stavris earlier this year, and I'm just going to quickly plug a project that he's involved with. He's involved with somebody else, but I don't know uh, who that person is, but he is launching with that person uh, a project called Scanfully, and it's described as performance and health monitoring for WordPress, and the UVP is one uh, dashboard for WordPress sites, performance and health. I think you can probably understand what that is. Um, but if I quickly go to the features, you'll get an idea. It's a dashboard. There's uptime monitoring, performance monitoring, site health, event timeline, and lighthouse scanning built in. Uh, if you go to scanfully.com, you can see that it's signing up for early access. So I don't think this exists yet uh, in the wild, but you can sign up and get some early access. So if that kind of thing is up your street and you want to help Remkus out, then scanfully. Dot com. Yeah. Okay. The the other person, by the way, is Barry Coy, who's the yes. owner of Never Five plugins. Can I just say that when I was transcribing this the other day, right? Mm -hmm. That ended up coming out as Barry Coy, who sounds like somebody from like Manchester, you mm -hmm. know, Barry Coy. Yeah. Uh B A R R Y <laughs> space C O Y. But I don't think that's how you spell it, is it? Can I can you just tell me how to spell that so I can go and change the transcript genuinely? Uh, B A R R Y is his first name. Oh, that's right. I got that. Yes. And Koi is K O O I J. Okay. Yeah. It yeah. was C O Y. Talk and I actually, in the, in the, the transcript, I put a question on mark. On that, yeah. I, wanted to, I wanted to have a word about what, what Remkus is doing, the scan for these things. Yeah. This should be in the core of every managed WordPress host out there because I don't understand why it is and I don't understand what managed WordPress is if this kind of stuff isn't in. And there's we've got Dave Gray who's in the who's in the chat. He's got a very similar thing called Heads Up WP. And he um he he sends me scans of Bertha.a AI every so often, just so you got a broken link. It was down for two minutes. It's you've got you've got some orphan <laughs> links here. <laughs> this page doesn't work, and all this kind of stuff. And that's that's what it is. So you know, competition in in uh, in WordPress is what makes it work. But you've got Heads Up WP as well, which is very very similar. Um, Dave's building out a SaaS for it as well. You know, so it's and it's it's um, and Dave's very very new to the plugin business kind of thing, and and is a great programmer. But the the thing is, is that I when I had um, a sandwich and a cake with Dave the other day in in a nice little cafe very close to us, I said, "Why isn't this in WordPress core, or why isn't this in hosts core?" You know, this your your customer because you know that I do mentoring and coaching and stuff like that. So I just went out and said, "Just sell it to the hosts. Just get get them to distribute it." Or you know, your your main client is the host on this kind of thing, and I'm sure that could must be Remkus's um, end game is to say. Come on, hosts, up your game a bit. Yeah, maybe. And, and let yeah. and let people know when your when their website is down or they got a broken link or a broken page or or you know even even drill down to accessibility issues on your website. Say you've built a new page, your whole website is accessible. You've worked really hard on that, and then all of a sudden you've built a new page or you've had an author go onto that page, a guest author. And they've put a yellow button somewhere, or or something that's in, that's not accessible, to to warn you that you've got a, you've got an accessibility issue on your on a new page. Why not do that? Great, great point. I think the question on everybody's mind though is, what sandwich did you get? Um, and... uh, he actually liked a cake, and I think I had a sausage and bacon sandwich because I just couldn't resist because I don't have bread in my house. 
<laughs> is this a religious thing or a... I went, oh, just... bread. <laughs> I'll have some bread. Well, anywhere near bread. <laughs> anyway, scanfully.com. That was, Indeed, that, scanfully. There you go. Well done, Rembrandt. Yeah, well and done, Rembrandt. Thank you so much. Yeah. Um, okay, right. Sorry, sorry. Uh, on. I'm I'm sorry, I'm just disturbing. I guess Andrew is also into a, a restaurant type of things, I guess. Andrew runs some restaurants. Andrew, I'm right? Say that again, Sabir, I missed it. Yeah, yeah. You also run some restaurant things. Restaurant. Restaurant Rest, things. Restaurant things. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm doing one at the minute. Yeah. Nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> this is, this is a side coffee line. shop into a steakhouse. Yeah, I'm into <laughs> restaurant. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. honestly. It's... It... <laughs> Okay, let's get back to WordPress quick because we are fast. Oh, my goodness, we're running out of time. Um, okay, WP Data Dashboard Tracks WordPress ecosystem. I'm just going to mention this and show you. Um, this is this is a kind of an important thing because it got kind of ripped out of um, the uh, the theme repository a little bit, you know, all the metrics and all of that. Let's not get into that. But this is a project by, forgive me, um, Munich-based Hendrik Luhusen. Uh, uh, I try so hard, but I fail every time. You are so um, English, it's just ridiculous. <laughs> I know, I know. Um, and it's exploring the, the landscape of WordPress themes. Essentially, he was keeping track of everything in the theme world on, a, on an Excel spreadsheet or a spreadsheet. Um, and he's now moved it over to what you might consider to be a SaaS. So if you're a theme developer or you're in the marketplace for a theme and you want to see what's popular, what's rising, what's falling, what uses blocks, then you can do all of that here. You can go here, use these tags to sort of, okay, I want something that might fit education or something that's got a responsive layout, right to left language support, is using full site editing, you get the idea. But possibly the most interesting thing um, would be this column down here. If you go to the list view, now I find this really interesting. This usage is a metric that he has come up with, and I, so I can't tell you what the formula is, but he's mixing up the number of active, active installs with whether or not those active installs are still in use. So the higher this number, the more sort of sticky, if you like, that theme is. So, all right, a, 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 I guess, you know, a theme could have 600,000 downloads, but it's used by only one website. Nobody stuck around. It never had any longevity. The higher this number, the, the more sticky it is and the more in use it is. So. I really wanted to dig into this, but we're not going to have time to do that. But it's there. Uh, it's called WP Dashboard, uh, and it's w-data-dashboard.com. Don't know if anybody wanted to get into that. We are so out of time. I'm so sorry. Nope. No, all good. Okay, great. Okay, in Let which case, we will quickly move on. OMG, do you know what? Do you know what? I'm going to bump these to next week. There's no point in rushing them. Let's just, unless... Was there something that I missed that you three guests had read that you wanted deliberately to go through? Or are we all good if I just say, let's knock it on the head there because we're just going to not do anything any justice. It's probably better if we just push things to next week with different... But that OMG, IMG, there's, there's, there, okay. with, I'm, my, I've got certain views on that. So maybe I mean on next week. Okay, yeah. right. That's interesting. I'll just quickly say that the two Corys, Corey Miller and Corey Maas, have released this project. They did it in the in the open, in the uh, post status community, and they've released it. All of the links, plus the ones we never got to, will be in the show notes. There was going to be all sorts of stuff about plugins that have been acquired, about plugins that are possibly going to go away. We were going to talk about the WordFence CLI. We were going to talk about all sorts of things. Ugh. You've been publicly accessibility shamed. There was a lot to say, but we're not going to have time for it because we are fast approaching and I've got a hard stop in three minutes. So, yes, I'm afraid that's it. So, that being said, um, I'm going to say a big, big thank you, firstly, to the three people on the screen. So, thank you to Zabir. I really appreciate you joining us. To Taco for joining us as well. And to Andrew Palmer for stepping in at the last minute. and. Uh, you know, telling us about his sandwich. Come back next week. Have another sandwich, and you can. Uh, I will. He's, he's nodding. He's nodding. It's all good. Right. So the slightly what, humiliating. I've I I got it. Smooth buttery feel. What's that? <laughs> the name of the podcast, you idiot. Oh. Oh, I well, see. Yeah. Okay. Sm right. Smooth. Did I say oh. that? 
Yes, you did. You did. Smooth, buttery feel. It's going down on the list. Yeah, okay. Yeah, smooth, buttery feel. Thank you. Perfect. Got it. Written down. Uh, thanks to those people who've made a comment. This show is nothing without you. Um, really appreciate it. If you want to add any comments after the fact, go to wpbuilds.com. Search for This Week in WordPress 274 and stick your comments in there. I'm asking people to do that from now on because we've got a darn fine commenting system built into our CMS and always ends up on Twitter. Uh, right, on that bombshell, let's do the slightly humiliating wave. Oh, look, everybody, first time. There we go. Perfect. Thank you so much. We'll be back next week. But for now, I hope you have a nice week. Guests, I'll be back in about 10 seconds. We'll, uh, we'll see you in a sec. Bye. See ya.